The Woman Warrior, White Tigers. When we Chinese girls listened to the adults talk story, we learned that we failed if we grew up to be but wives or slaves. We could be heroines, swordswomen. Even if she had to rage across all China, a swordswoman got even with anybody who hurt her family. Perhaps women were once so dangerous that they had to have their feet bound. It was a woman who invented white crane boxing only 200 years ago. She was already an expert pole fighter, daughter of a teacher trained at the Shaolin Temple, where there lived an order of fighting monks. She was combing her hair one morning when a white crane alighted outside her window. She teased it with her pole, which it pushed aside with a soft brush of its wing. Amazed, she dashed outside the tr and tried to knock the crane off its perch. It snapped her pole in two. Recognizing the presence of great power, she asked the spirit of the white crane if it would teach her to fight. It answered with a cry that white crane boxers imitate today. Later the bird returned as an old man, and he guided her boxing for many years. Thus she gave the world a new martial art. This was one of the tamer, more modern stories, mere introduction. My mother told others that followed swordswomen through woods and palaces for years. Night after night, my mother would talk story until we fell asleep. I couldn't tell where the stories left off and the dreams began, her voice, the voice of the heroines in my sleep. And on Sundays, from noon to midnight, we went to the movies at the Confucius Church. We saw swordswomen jump over houses from a standstill. They didn't even need a running start. At last I saw that I too had been in the presence of great power, my mother talking story. After I grew up, I heard the chant of Fa Mulan, the girl who took her father's place in battle. Instantly I remembered that as a child I had followed my mother about the house, the two of us singing about how Fa Mulan fought gloriously and returned alive from war to settle in the village. I had forgotten this chant that was once mine, given me by my mother, who may not have known its power to remind. She said I would grow up a wife and a slave, but she taught me the song of the warrior woman, Fa Mulan. I would have to grow up a warrior woman. The call would come from a bird that flew over our roof. In the brush drawings it looks like the ideograph for human, two black wings. The bird would cross the sun and lift into the mountains, which look like the ideograph mountain, their parting the mist briefly that swirled opaque again. I would be a little girl of seven the day I followed the bird away into the mountains. The brambles would tear off my shoes and the rocks cut my feet and fingers, but I would keep climbing, eyes upward, to follow the bird. We would go around and around the tallest mountain, climbing ever upward. I would drink from the river, which I would meet again and again. We would go so high the plants would change, and the river that flows past the village would become a waterfall. At the height where the bird used to disappear, the clouds would gray the world like an ink wash. Even when I got used to that gray, I would only see peaks as if shaded in pencil rocks like charcoal rubbings everything so murky there would be just two black strokes the bird inside the clouds inside the dragon's breath i would not know how many hours or days passed suddenly without noise i would break clear into a yellow warm world new trees would lean toward me at mountain angles but when i looked for the village it would have vanished under the clouds the bird, now gold so close to the sun, would come to rest on the thatch of a hut which, until the bird's two feet touched it, was camouflaged as part of the mountainside. The door opened and an old man and an old woman came out carrying bowls of rice and soup and a leafy branch of peaches. "'Have you eaten rice today, little girl?' they greeted me. "'Yes, I have,' I said, out of politeness. "'Thank you.' No, I haven't, I would have said in real life, mad at the Chinese for lying so much. I'm starved. Do you have any cookies? I like chocolate chip cookies. We were about to sit down to another meal, the old woman said. Why don't you eat with us? 
They just happened to be bringing three rice bowls and three pairs of silver chopsticks out to the plank table under the pines. They gave me an egg, as if it were my birthday, and tea, though they were older than I, but I poured for them. The teapot and the rice pot seemed bottomless, but perhaps not. The old couple ate very little except for peaches. When the mountains and the pines turned into blue oxen, blue dogs, and blue people standing, the old couple asked me to spend the night in the hut. I thought about the long way down in the ghostly dark and decided yes. The inside of the hut seemed as large as the outdoors. Pine needles covered the floor in thick patterns. Someone had carefully arranged the yellow, green, and brown pine needles according to age. When I stepped carelessly and mussed the line, my feet picked up new blends of earth colors. But the old man and old woman walked so lightly that their feet never stirred the designs of by a needle. A rock grew in the middle of the house, and that was their table. The benches were fallen trees. Ferns and shade flowers grew out of one wall, the mountainside itself. The old couple tucked me into a bed just my width. Breathe evenly, or you'll lose your balance and fall out, said the woman, covering me with a silk bag stuffed with feathers and herbs. Opera singers who begin their training at age five sleep in beds like this. Then the two of them went outside, and through the window I could see them pull on a rope looped over a branch. The rope was tied to the roof, and the roof opened up like a basket lid. I would sleep with the moon and the stars. I did not see whether the old people slept, so quickly did I drop off, but they would be there waking me with food in the morning. Little girl, you have now spent almost a day and a night with us, the old woman said. In the morning, light I could see her earlobes pierced with gold. Do you think you can bear to stay with us for fifteen years? We can train you to be.